Baseball superstar Alex Rodriguez has been at the center of controversy throughout his nearly 20-year career. In February 2009, Rodriguez admitted using performance-enhancing drugs, but he says just from 2001 to 2003, when he was with the Texas Rangers. The New York Yankees slugger was implicated in the biogenesis scandal in January of last year. Then in August, Major League Baseball suspended Rodriguez for all of this season. A new book takes readers inside the league's crusade against performance-enhancing drugs. It's called Bloodsport, Alex Rodriguez, Biogenesis, and the Quest to End Baseball's Steroid Era. Authors are Tim Elfrink and Gus Garcia Roberts are here for an interview you'll see first on CBS This Morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks so much. What Thanks a ride you take us on, yeah. I have to say, as a person who's not like a baseball, baseball know-it-all. It, it was, was a so ride for us, too. Was it a ride for <laughs> you? Yeah. Because for the first time in the book, you reveal that Alex got permission from the league to use performance-enhancing drugs back in 2007. Why would they do that when they allegedly want to end steroid use in baseball? Tim. Well, this is uh, something that's agreed upon in the uh, drug agreement that baseball operates with, that if a player is taking a medication that's banned and they feel they have a, a sound medical reason to take it, they can apply to a doctor who's been appointed by the commissioner's office and the union. The doctor can look at the evidence, and if he agrees, then the player can use that substance for the whole season. And what's so surprising that we found in our reporting is that in 2007, which was a year that Alex won the MVP award mm -hmm. and subsequently got a huge new contract from the Yankees, he was given one of these exemptions to use testosterone, which uh, during this hearing, Rob Manfred, the uh, COO of uh, Major League Baseball, uh, describes as the mother of all anabolic steroids. And, um, and, and then he sought to use it again yeah. in 2008 yeah. from the MLB. Yeah. But what did the MLB say then? Well, he, he sought to get two uh, exemptions, both of them, to boost testosterone levels. Uh, and the MLB again gave him permission. Uh, he used Clomid, uh, or at least he sought to use Clomid in 2008, uh, which is a fertility drug that's, that's often used to, to boost testosterone. Um, and testosterone exemptions are very rare because uh, the only reason a young male could need one is if they've, used test if they've used steroids in the past. So why is this information relevant? Does it suggest some, something about the MLB? Well, I think it's just a, a fascinating detail that makes the whole story a little bit more complicated because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, in the biogenesis scandal that came last year, this is the exact same substance that Alex was, was then banned for 211 games for, for using uh, after buying it from Tony Bosch. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Bosch says he was the guy who was giving Alex a throw. And there's some pretty right. wild stories to right. emerge from the book. I mean, just crazy stuff, including what happened at this Miami nightclub. What, what happened there? Right, so what happened was uh, Bosch would meet A-Rod at his various homes. He met him in Manhattan. He would meet him in Star Island in Miami. And one time he wasn't able to meet him at the mansion in Star Island. So they arranged to meet at the Fountain Blue Hotel, at, at uh, the Live nightclub, which is one of the, the more chic nightclubs in Miami. And uh, Bosch drew A-Rod's blood in a bathroom stall. He put the vial in his breast pocket. Then he went dancing on the, on the dance uh, floor and lost the vial. So he's looking around the nightclub for a vial. He eventually locates it. But it, it, it shows these guys were not always the most uh, sleek of the way that they that they did business. Uh, That's a very they're a little bumbling. He's <laughs> very reckless. But you know, A Rod is a big focus of the book. But you also talk about this has been going on for <clears> some time. You talk about the race between Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa at the time when they were chasing Roger Maris's home run. That even then, the book sort of implies that baseball officials turn the other cheek. Could you talk about that, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. I think it is really important to put this a biogenesis story in the context of baseball history, especially because Alex Rodriguez, you know, came into the league as a superstar during the heart of what we now call the steroid era. And, uh, you know, in the years after the strike, baseball went on strike in 94. Players all scattered. A lot of them went to gyms where steroids were suddenly widely available. And that's what they spread a around the country. perfect storm of people using mm -hmm. steroids. It really was a perfect right storm. There. And, uh, you know, the, the commissioner's office, I think it's pretty clear in, in hindsight, was so focused on, on winning back public support, on fixing what had happened during the strike, that, uh, you know, willfully or not, they, they let this explosion of performance-enhancing drugs really change the way the game of baseball is played for, you know, almost 15 years. You also point out in the book, everybody's financially benefited, though, who juiced, which I think is ironic. Right. I mean, all these uh, many Biogenesis players signed contracts after their suspensions. Uh, even A-Rod, you know, after this 2007 exemption, he signed a $275 million contract extension with the Yankees. Which yes, is still it, being paid for for, what, three more years? 
Because he comes back in 2015. Yeah, I, I believe he's going to try to come back in 2015. And the Yankees don't have a choice. I think that they'll take him back as well. Well, Tim Elfrink and Gus Garcia Roberts, thank you. And Bloodsport goes on sale today.